hi guys you're welcome back to my channel my name is nancy and if this is your first time here you're also welcome kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put on your notification bell to be notified when i upload new tutorials The name of this fabric is called a duchess fabric and i made use of two and a half yards the first step is to fold the fabric into two and further fold the fabric into two again so i practically folded this fabric into four the next step is to rule the starting line which also serves as the shoulder line From this side of the fold, I placed my tape on the shoulder line to mark the neck width. So my neck width is 3 inches. For a plus size person, you should mark 4 inches. Now, the neck depth is 1 inch and I connected both the neck width to the neck depth to form a curved neckline. So after both the front piece and the back piece of this dress has been cut out, I would later trim out the neck line for the front piece. Alright, so the next step now is to place my tape on the shoulder line to mark my shoulder measurements divided by 2. So I want the sleeve length of this dress to be 13 inches. Now I placed my tape from this point to mark 13 inches plus 1 inch sewing allowance and that is 14 inches altogether. Now on this point I marked. I would place my tape below the point to mark one inch. Then connect this new point to the neck width as shown. So this slant line is the shoulder slope. The next step is to mark the sleeve opening. So to get the sleeve opening, I'll be using my bust point as a reference. I place my tape from the shoulder vertically downwards. My bust point is 9.5 inches, but I won't be marking exactly 9.5 inches. The reason is because the sleeve opening for this style is a bit wide. So I added extra 2.5 inches to the 9.5 inches and it became 12 inches altogether. Now I extended this line. The next step is to mark the full length of this dress. I placed my tape from the shoulder line vertically. I went ahead to adjust my fabric so you can see the markings properly. But before, I'll be marking somewhere around here, which is 30 inches. And the reason for marking this 30 inches is as a result of me adjusting my fabric because I know that while I'm adjusting the fabric, the placement of my tape might be altered. So as I said earlier, you can see that the placement of my tape is now on 35 inches, which isn't correct. So now I've placed it back to 30 inches. So the full length of my dress is 58 inches. I added 1 inch sewing allowance to the end, which made it 59 inches altogether. Now on the M line, I would place my hip circumference divided by 4. So the next step is to mark the allowance that is needed. It depends on how free you want your dress to be, but I don't want it to be too free. And I'll just mark three and a half inches. I would extend this line vertically upward to the bust point line.
the next step is to make a curve below the armhole from this point i marked three inches and on this other point i marked three inches to connect both points together in form of a curved line the next step is to mark a half inch sewing allowance to the top of the shoulder slope to which both the front piece and the back piece would be joined Now I went ahead to trim out both the front piece and the back piece as shown. The next step is to take out just the back piece. So this is just the front piece alone. The next step is to trim the neckline for the front piece. Now I placed my tape from the shoulder line to mark 4 inches. And connected the neck width to the neck depth in form of a curved neckline. The next step is to mark the slits for the center neckline. To achieve this, you place your tape on this line to mark half inch. Now, for the length of the slits, I marked four inches. For a plus size person, you should mark five inches. The next step is to connect both points together to form a triangle. Now I went ahead to trim out the slits and to also trim out the neckline. The next step is to cut the facing for the neck slit. So I have a little piece of this fabric here which I folded into two. Now I went ahead to place the sides of the neckline directly on the little piece. Making sure that the facing is 2 inches longer than the top of the neck slit and also 2 inches longer than the bottom of the neck slit as shown. Now I trimmed out the top of the facing. To have exactly same shape as the neckline. And I'm also going to trim out the slits. Alright, so you can decide to add little shapes to the sides of the facing depending on how you want yours to be. The next step is to place a gum stay on the wrong side of the facing and to also overlock the edges of the facing. If you do not have an overlocking machine, you can decide to secure the edges of your facing by folding it half inch in. Truth be told, if you want your 
work to look professionally made i would advise you to use an overlocking machine to overlock the edges of the facing because if you decide to fold the edges of your facing and you placed it below your fabric it actually depends on the fabric yes but if you place it below some fabrics it shows the edges of the line which doesn't make it look professionally made all right i've overlocked the edges of my facing and the next thing i did was to place the right side of the facing on the right side of my neckline to secure the neck slits together by half inch following the direction of the chalk so the facing has been properly secured the next step is to place the aiming gum below the facing so i took the front piece to the ironing board to secure the facing so the facing has been properly ironed the next step is to place the back piece directly on the front piece to secure the shoulders by half inch Now the next step is to secure the sleeve opening by folding it half inch in and further folding it by half inch. And I'll also do the same for the second sleeve opening. Once the sleeve opening has been secured, I would place the front piece and the back piece on each other equally. So from the bottom of the dress, I placed my tape vertically to mark the slit opening. I want the length of my sleeve opening to be 22 inches. So I marked this. I would also make the length of the slit opening on the other side to be 22 inches as well. The next step is to secure the sides by one inch. And I'll stop stitching when I get to the end of this point I marked. I'll do the same for the other side of the dress. So this is my dress and I turned it to the right side of the fabric and this is the slit opening on the sides. So the next step is to secure the slit opening by folding it half inch and further folding it by half inch following the direction of my finger. And I went ahead to repeat the same sewing process on the other side of the slit. The next thing I did was to secure the M of the dress by folding it half inch and further folding it by half inch. And to also secure the other side of the M. The next step is to make the patch pockets so this is the pieces i'll be using for the pockets the width is nine inches while the length of this piece is 11 inches now i went ahead to fold this fabric into two on this side of the pocket i marked one and a half inches And on this side, I marked two inches to connect both points together to trim out the little curve. I took this pocket to the ironing board to fold the three edges of the sides by half inch.
all right guys so this is the edges of the pocket folded properly the next thing i did was to bring a piece from the ankara so the wideness of this piece is two inches i took this to my ironing board to fold the edges in by half inch and further fold it on each other as shown all right after that i placed the edges of my pocket in between the folded fabric and then use my pins to secure the edges So I've pinned the anchor to the edges of the pockets. I would also make sure I do the same for the second pocket. Now I'll take this to the sewing machine to secure the inner edges of the anchor. So the next step is to secure the top of the pocket by folding it half inch in and further folding it in by half inch to make a straight stitch. To know where the pockets will be attached on the dress, I place the starting of my tape directly on the shoulder of the dress, vertically downwards. My hip line is 26 inches. If I should place the pocket there, the pocket would be very low. So what I did was to reduce it by 4 inches. So 26 minus 4 is 22 inches. So I marked 22 inches. Now I'm also going to mark 22 inches on the other side. The next step is to spread out the dress. Now I'm going to fold the pocket into two so I could get the center of the pocket. Then use a chalk to make the markings. Now I'll pin the center of the pocket directly on this line I chalked. And to properly pin the sides of the pocket, making sure that it captures just a single piece of this dress. Meaning that you should place your fingers below the sides of the pocket you are pinning. So it doesn't capture the other side of the dress. After pinning, I took the dress to the sewing machine to secure the outer edges of the Ankara. Now I'm also going to be pinning the second pocket on this other side. After pinning the second pocket, I also secured the edges. Alright guys, the dress is looking beautiful already. The next step is to make the udi. Kindly pay attention here because I will try my possible best to explain it the simplest way I can. This pattern is quite different because of the shape of this udi. So let's get started. The first thing we need to note is the width of the udi. 
and to do this you need to take the measurement of the entire neckline for both the front piece and the back piece all right so this is 19 inches The first thing I did was to mark one inch away from this side of the paper. So from this point, I would really straight line of 17 inches. So this 17 inches will serve as my hoodie height. So I would say that it should be like a constant measurement there because for an average person, the hoodie height of 17 inches would be very okay. Now the next step is to mark the hoodie width. Now, the hoodie width was gotten by taking the measurements of the neckline. So, what we had was 19 inches. I went ahead to divide that 19 inches into two. So, 19 inches divided by two is nine and a half inches. Now, I placed it on this line, but I decided to add one inch sewing allowance to the side, which made it 10 and a half inches. Now, I marked 10 and a half inches here. And I'll also mark 10 and a half inches on this side, which is going to be the neckline that would be attached to the neckline of the dress. And to also close the other side of the hoodie height, which is 17 inches. Now the next step is to extend this side of the line outward by half inch. And on this line, I placed my tape to mark 4 inches to use my curve ruler in connecting both points together. So this side is for the opening round the face. The next step is to mark the curve for the back of the hoodie. I placed my tape on this line to mark 4 inches and I placed my tape from this other line to mark 2 inches to connect both points together using my curved ruler. So for this particular hoodie, there is an extra fold at the center back which looks like a drip. So, so to achieve this, I placed my tape from this point to mark 4 inches on this line. Now I extended the tape outward to also mark 4 inches and connected this new point to this end as shown. Now from this side of the neckline, I placed my tape vertically upward to mark 4 inches and connected this point to this other point as shown. So with this curvy extension, you'd be able to achieve the drape at the center back of the hoodie. The next step is to fold the neckline of the dress equally to take the measurements of just the back neckline. So here I have it as four inches. Now I would place my tape on this line to mark four inches. I would place my tape above this line to mark half inch to connect both points together. Alright, this is all for the hoodie. The next step is to trim out the hoodie. So I placed the hoodie on the fabric to cut out four pieces. But this is just two pieces. I placed the right side of the fabric on each other to secure the side by half inch, holding the direction of my chalk. So these other pieces will serve as the lining. I placed the fabric on each other to secure the side by half inch following the direction of the chalk. Now 
The next step is to pin the two hoodies together, right side to right side. Now I took this to the sewing machine to make a stretch stitch to secure this side following the direction of my chalk. But before doing that, take note of something here. This would be the opening to which the neckline of the dress would be inserted into. But before taking this hoodie to your sewing machine to secure the sides, you would have to fold one side of the neckline in by half inch. Then you pin that and also fold the other side of the neckline in by half inch. You can then take this to the sewing machine to stitch the curve following the direction of the chalk we marked initially. Alright, my hoodie is ready and I've turned it to the right side of the fabric. I also took it to my ironing board to make sure it's ironed properly. Now, the next thing I want to do is to attach this hoodie to the neckline of this dress. So on this side, where I didn't make that little half inch fold, I'm going to place it on the wrong side of the neckline to stitch by half inch. The final step is to fold the other side of the neckline by half inch in, making sure it covers the joining around the neckline. Alright guys, this is the final outcome of this dress. I hope this tutorial was helpful. And if you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe, share and like my videos and also put on your notification bell to be notified when I upload new tutorials.